Hey, what is going on, you Snaggle 2 Centret? Today we're playing some games with Luke Metalization. Um, Metalization deck that is backed up by Lucario Mel Metal. This is not my list, this is Mellow Magikarp's list. Um, Mellow underscore Magikarp on Twitter, Mellow Magikarp on Twitch. Be sure to go check him out. He streams pretty frequently over there, pretty consistently. Um, and he's uh, a pretty cool guy. Um, yeah, this is his list. He used it to win a tournament called the Sunday Open last Sunday. Um, so I want to give it a shot, um, and it's all right. I'm not a huge fan of Luke Metalization, but I still want to show it off to you guys. Um, he really loves it. Um, the deck is still solid. Not my favorite way to play Zation right now. Still a fun deck. Nice to switch it up now and then. Don't have to be playing combo Zation all the time. Um, and I've always been a big fan of Lucario Metal Metal. Actually, as a card in general, never played it a whole ton um, in tournaments or at all. But I like the card a lot. GX Attack is cool. Um, the rest of the card's pretty cool. Um, so the way this deck works is we play Crushing Hammer, um, and then we have the Lucario Metal Metal's GX attack that can also take energy away from our opponent, and we're kind of like, sort of like a control deck. We have a lot of ways to remove energy from our opponent between the Crushing Hammer and the GX attack, the Full Metal Wall GX, and then we're just kind of ba backed up by the best attacker uh, in the game, the most self-sustaining attacker, or not self-sustaining, but the, the best just attacker by itself. Zacian is just, just Zacian with Metal Saucers, you're good to go. Your deck's already pretty good. Um, so yeah, best overall attacker in the game. Gets pretty tanky when you combo it with the full metal wall and some metal frying pans. And um, yeah, that's all I really have to say. We got a Feeny in here for the Blounds matchup. We got the Duskman in here for the tag team matchups. A little bit more of an efficient attacker than going, you know, back to back Brave Blades. So let's go ahead. Let's get into some games. All right, we won the coin flip here in this first one. We would like to uh, go first, so we will be doing that. Unfortunately, Open the Elder Gods. We did get a quick wall though, which is super nice. because uh, we want to be able to intrepid sword turn one. We are a Zacian deck. Yeah, Elder Goss start. Pretty bad, not gonna lie. Quick ball for Intrepid Sword turn one. Got some frying pans to back it up. Not too bad. So we'll take it. Um Hey, another frying pan. I think we're gonna give up one of the frying pans here. We don't know what we're up against, so we don't know really what we want to kind of have access to. Frying pan, intrepid sword, no energy. It's a little rough. We'll be fine though. We have Marnie next turn. We have another quick ball. We have another frying pan. We can put another frying pan on another Zacian, possibly. We'll see what our opponent's playing first. Um, they have a Jirachi. They have an Oranguru. I would guess mirror match. Or not mirror match. I'd guess combo Zacian. Which I would guess they're playing combo Zacian. Uh, we don't know for sure. We'll find out shortly. I would guess the combo Zacian. Here comes a quick ball. There goes a metal energy. So probably kind of makes me wish I had kept this frying pan and gotten rid of something like the Malum Lana, which isn't very good against combo Zacian. Uh, the frying pans are very good because um, it means these Zacians can't one-shot our Zacians. They have frying pans of them their own. We both probably play a tool scrapper. And the, yeah, the frying pans are just really important for both of us. They got a lot of energy um, out here off the rip. They're having a very good setup so far. Us, not so much. Um, but it's not, it's not the worst thing ever. We just kind of no, have no energy, <laughs> which has been kind of my struggle with this deck, kind of seemingly constantly. Um, there go their goggles. Um, so that always makes me wonder, when I see goggles and frying pan, are they playing one of each? Is it two of one? Is it two of each? Wh where where does that lie? It always feels like it's hard to figure out. Um, all right. There we go. Jirachi's awake and over to me. All right, some crushing hammers coming out here. Wouldn't mind seeing a couple heads. Start with the tails. Hey, there we go. Set that guy back a little bit. Gonna give the Malon Lana. Malon Lana not super ridiculously good in this matchup. Gonna get myself. I want to get the Lucario Mel Metal here, I think. Um, want to be able to use that full metal wall GX. And then Marnie. I want to save this frying pan for a different Zacian, really. Hey. We whiffed energy again. Hey, we got another heads on a crushing hammer, though. I'll take it. Intrepid Sword. Hey, we whiffed energy again. <laughs> like I said... This is seemingly my constant struggle with this deck. Simply whiffing energy constantly. I don't get it. We've seen a ton of cards at this point. Uh, look at all these cards we have in our discard pile. All these cards in our hand. Two Intrepid Swords have gone by. Um, and we have yet to hit an energy. It's fine. Here comes our opponent's Tool Scrapper. Um, now we want to get that other frying pan. They could be playing two Tool Scrapper, but we're just going to assume they're playing one. Roll with it. We want to find our tool scrapper. We want to find that frying pan that is now on the bottom of our deck. Get that off the bottom of the deck. Get that on the Zacian to protect it from the Brave Blade of our opponent. And we also want to build up into this full metal wall as soon as possible. Maybe our opponent will fe be feeling the uh, strain of the lack of energy themselves. And also not be able to get off a uh, 
Brave Blade this turn. Um, this matchup definitely has a the possibility to develop really interestingly um, and go to pretty big lengths actually in just kind of terms of how long the games can take um, potentially. Yeah, it has possibilities to go very long. Um, if we both, if our tools both stick, neither of us are one-shotting each other. We'll do the full metal wall to take away a bunch of energy off his at some point. Here comes the Intrepid Sword. Looks like they forgot to Stellar Wish, as well as use Oranguru again. A um, little bit uh, excited there from our opponent. I don't even know what to say. Um, skateboard my active so I can maybe get into a Jirachi. Put out the power plant. I'm just going to go ahead and play a Marnie. We do not play um, any Dedenne or anything. Hey! There we go. Gonna go ahead and get ourselves a Jirachi. Treat, so I wish. Get the. Hmm. <laughs> Saucer, I think. Boss order is not gonna do a whole ton for us. I'm gonna attack to Lu attach to Lucario and then Intrepid Sword. Hey, all right, there we go. Now things are turning around for us a little bit here. Finding some energy. Finding some stuff to work with. Uh, still a long road ahead of us, but a long road ahead of our opponent as well. Even if they were to have you know, the boss's orders, knock out our Zacian. Uh, we got the response of the full metal wall to rip three energy away. And it becomes kind of a battle of resources more than taking knockouts, potentially. Sometimes, it depends how much energy we both get in play off our intrepid swords. But it can very much become a battle of resources versus... Um, Resources versus actually like a prize race situation. And one of us is going to end up with so much more energy in play than our opponent. Um, usually that's something we try and do. Whereas our opponent is a little bit more on the prize race side. Trying to win as fast as possible. Um, while we have crushing hammers, we got the full metal wall. And then can one shot their Zations. So that'll also like eliminate three energy from play. They can just start to run out of energy. Um, they're around one saucer right now. That's not a whole ton uh, yet. Still plenty of time to get quite rid of quite a few more energy though. Uh, here comes a primate wisdom. Have this crushing hammer in hand. I think it's our last crushing hammer. We've already found our crushing hammers really fast here. Looks like they've pulled off the combo um, and are ready to start drawing some prize cards. One thing that is scary is we do have this Eldegoss in play, actually, which means if they knock out a Zacian for three and knock out the Eldegoss for three, that's their six prize cards. And then uh, they win the game. So uh, we don't want that to happen. Um, hand isn't too ridiculously good to be aggressive. We did not take a boss's order there overtaking a metal saucer. I kind of am regretting that because we didn't really have a ton of energy in our discard pile. My thought process was that they knock out our Zacian. I want to be able to have a response, um, but that obviously didn't happen. Let's see, we top deck, power plant. Stellar, we have a boss. There's the tool scrapper. I'm real tempted to tool scrapper. We're gonna go with the boss here. Um, so it's gonna do a lot for us. Metal saucer here to our Luke metal. I um, mean, this means we don't need the frying pants anymore. Actually, bring this guy up. Switch. Full metal wall GX. Don't need frying pants on our stations anymore. Uh, because we take minus 30 damage now that we've used the full metal wall. So that it can only hit our Zations for 200. They're never one shot a Zation again. But like I said, this Eldegoss in play isn't great. Um, they could like two shot the Luke metal, then one shot the Eldegoss, and then you get the charge to prism once. That would be game for our opponent. But we just reset all their energy out of play. We still have a crushing hammer to work with. Uh, so we should get into a draw supporter or something, and then we should be pretty good to go from there. Um, yeah. We could have put the... Um, Frying pan, I guess. I mean, a frying pan on a Lucario metal, metal still makes a difference because they would hit it for minus 60, and then we could heal for. Uh, or actually, does it? Yeah, it does. Uh, yeah, it does make a difference. If we get a frying pan on the Lucario metal, metal and we are able to mal and Lana it, it will actually still make a difference. Um, uh, I, for them actually two shotting the Lucario metal. metal. Um, so yeah, our opponent's just looking for saucers here. They would love to hit into our Lucario, Lucario metal, metal this turn. We don't currently have a great response to them doing that. Um, we could just hit him with that Steel Fist, actually, and that would do 20, because I'm sure they would set up to want the Frying Pan. And then we could respond, to it, respond after that with a Brave Blade, and that would actually be enough damage to get around the Frying Pan. Um, we wouldn't even need to Tool Scrap that, per se, um, or necessarily. Um, but it looks like they're not going to be hitting us this turn, I don't think. So we're going to have a little bit of a Stalemate once again. I really want to get the Lucario Metal out of the active, but if that doesn't happen, it's really not that big of a deal. There we go, attached to the Zacian. Like I said, we still got this Crushing Hammer. I feel like a top deck, top deck and energy. We could hard retreat the Luke uh, to the bench. Here's a Marnie from our opponent, though. We are definitely um, very welcoming of that Marnie. Appreciate that opponent. Um, very uh, nice of them to give us that. Here's a Saucer. Let's see if they get a second one. Yeah, them hitting this guy 
It's pretty good this turn, not gonna lie. Them hitting our Lucario Melmetal is pretty good. Let's see if they are able to um, pull that off or not. Yeah. Here comes the Guru. Followed up with a pass. All right, so the answer is no. Hmm. That is a lot of researches to all of a sudden lose. Let's save one of those for later. Hey, okay, there's an energy. Could look to hard retreat the Lucario Melmetal. I don't really want it in my active. It's not doing a whole ton for us right now. Um, let me switch we have left. Three switch left. Good chance to hit one. I'm going to go ahead and tattooization and research. Mm. Not good enough chance, I guess. Could have retreated. Yeah, it's fine. Um, quick ball away the Feeny. Probably could thin out a card here. The Duskman out of the deck. And then just Intrepid Sword, I think. Um, using that Steel Fist, not going to do a whole ton. Would rather dig deeper into my deck. Get something like that Tool Scrapper, which is a very big deal. So they're down two Saucer. All right. Good to know. Down two Saucer. Once again, still curious about that count. I'm guessing it's going to be one Goggles, one Frying Pan, because they are playing combo. That takes up a decent amount of space in the deck. Um, I could be wrong on that, and I guess we will figure out as the game progresses. Uh, but I would guess that our opponent probably plays um, one of each. Once again, we will kind of find out as the game progresses what they are actually playing. Um, either way, we're hoping even if they play more that they just don't hit them because we're going to be in a rough spot if they do. Once again, going back and forth, they're going to get this hit in on this Luke Metal almost for sure unless they have a really bad hand here. Nope, there's a scoop up net. They would need to have a really bad hand. So they're looking to two-shot this guy. They can hit him once here, and then they're looking to clean up the Eldegoss. And that's six prize cards because uh, they'll get four off of this because they do have the Drashi Prism in their prize cards, or they can draw three off this if they wanted to to play a little bit more around reset stamp it's really whatever our opponent wants to do there's a marnie could definitely get marnie here that would be unfortunate our tool scrapper is in our hand um definitely don't want to see that hopefully they don't do that maybe save it for next turn um but they, yeah they could definitely uh marnie so we do have an eight card hand so i would not blame my opponent they're just going with the in or just in trap sorting back and forth it looks like I, I guess that's what we're on right here Neither of us making a move. There's a switch. Man, how do I want to play this? I do not want this in my active. I do want to get Eldegoss off the field. I'm actually going to attach Eldegoss to possibly use that float up. Yeah. Then we're going to go ahead and switch to... This feels weird. I'm just going to go about it like this and we're going to see how this plays out. Saucer to the uh, Asian. I'm going to go ahead and Primate Wisdom the Scrapper on top of the deck. Go ahead and play a Marnie to drop their opponent's hand. I want the Scrapper around. There's a Metal Frying Pan we can put on our Lucario Mel Metal. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, Stellar Wish. Grab a crushing hammer. Oh, we could grab that boss's order so we can be aggressive. Crushing hammer doesn't do. I'm I'm down with that boss. I'm down with that boss. This is developing very interestingly. Like I was saying, it can. Um, how many energy do we have left? Here? One, two, three, four, seven. Neither of us want to make a move. Um, I'm waiting for the boss. They're probably also waiting for the boss's orders to make a move, but they don't have any great targets. Um, I mean, they can bring up this guy and hit it twice. Like I said, bring up this guy. Um, they don't have a ridiculously good amount of targets. And now I have that float up option. Which I definitely wouldn't mind doing instead of doing an Intrepid Sword on one of these turns. So, I'm sure this Eldegoss is going to become one of their targets, um, knowing I can float up. Now they're going after my Zation. How do I feel about that? Seems fine. I can just Brave Blade back. Knock it out. Then we just kind of hope our opponent uh, can't respond super well. Sure, Tool Scrapper. I wouldn't mind. Let's take a look at my discard pile real fast. I don't think I want to play the Acrobikes because I don't want to deck out. I'll play one Acrobike, actually. Get that energy. Attach to another station. Brave Blade for the knockout. No reason to play anything else that I see. Get two prize cards. And this is what I was saying about it. Kind of coming down to just kind of like resources uh, in this matchup more than anything. Two Saucer down for my opponent. Oh, seven energy down. Um, so eight total in play. They probably play eleven or twelve. 
Um, we can easily get a knockout on this next station, and then they just can't create another station. But actually, we'll be out of boss's orders at that point, so we can't actually chase another station. Um, but we could go, like, boss for a turn, knock out this, and then switch into Eldegoss, use that float up, get this Eldegoss out of here. We got three, what I say? Uh, seven, eight. So we have nine, ten, eleven left. We have three energy left, only a four card deck left. Um, so I think we'll be okay. Also, just Mal and Lana to switch and reset our Brave, Bla Brave Blade if we want to. Um, which is a nice, um, a nice thing we can do actually with the Mal and Lana. So there's two Mal and Lanas in this build. Um, so that can be pretty good. It looks like they're having a slow go of it. Here comes Asanya to find themselves some energy to even attach for turn. They haven't even attached for turn yet. They got two. Uh, we have that boss. We have switch boss. We can switch into the Eldegoss and then boss this guy up, knock him out. That's two more energy out of play. And we're going to be looking at a really good spot here. Especially because this Intrepid Sword probably just won't hit anything because they have seven in here, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that's their eleventh energy. Maybe play twelve. Um, yeah, we have to go switch into the Eldegoss. Hit him with that boss. And if they don't have another way to protect their Zation, like a frying pan, um, or I mean, frying pan goggles, anything like that, we will win uh, when they attack with it. So looking pretty good. Um, and if they do put have a pan or a goggles, we just go ahead and float up and get this guy out of here. And they just don't have a way to win on the game on the next turn. They can draw three prizes here, um, but can't draw any more. So we would just win. Um, so looking real good for us. Opponent doesn't have a ton of options left. Feeling pretty good. Yeah, kind of just out-resourced our opponent in the end. Put a lot of pressure on them. Um, made it awkward for them to attack at all in the early game. I think they probably should have been a little bit more aggressive, to be honest. Um, they're a little bit too aggressive with the Tool Scrapper. If you're not getting the knockout, the turn you're using the Tool Scrapper. It potentially wasted Tool Scrapper, like it was. Um, I think our opponent should have chilled with the Tool Scrapper. They need to be a little bit more aggressive. They need to, like, force out the... Make me find the, car the cards to use Lucario. Metal Metal, something like that. Draw some prize cards uh, pretty much any way they can, ideally. And then doing this whole... We just like sit on the bench and trepid sword stuff in the late game and i uh, hope it kind of works out it's the better way to go about it in my opinion um right, they tried not working out another station comes down um we will just switch and float up if our opponent does not we will mile will not float up actually if our opponent does not knock out our active there's a boss probably going to bring up our rangaroo here to try and stall we only have three cards left in deck so it's not too Ridiculously unreasonable for my opponent to kind of think that they could maybe deck us out by stalling. But yeah, we're going to mount Lana to the bench, go to the Eldegoss, float up away into the deck. Um, and we're going to be in a pretty good spot. Don't have a boss to close out the game. But we do have, hey, Crushing Hammer's not bad. Tails. Switch to the Eldegoss. Go ahead and Primate Wisdom. A Acro Bike on top seems pretty good, I guess. And I'm going to go ahead and float up. Yeah, float up. 50. Uh, yes. And I'm going to set up this station. The one right here with... Uh... Oh, I guess our deck shuffles. So maybe I want the Acrobat. I'm going to go ahead and set up this, this, this one that they can't one-shot. Send that into the active. I kind of want the Jirachi to stick around. So we're keeping the Jirachi around. I don't want him to knock on my Jirachi like, and Marnie me or something. Feels a little scary. It would probably be fine, to be honest. But... I don't know, better safe than sorry, it feels like most of the time. They're finally getting their first knockout here on our Zacian, it looks like. Uh, but it's definitely going to be way too little, way too late. Uh, they even still have two saucers left. But yeah, once again, way too little, way too late. Doesn't matter anymore at this point. There's a Shrine of Punishment from our opponent, which is pretty annoying because it can stack up on our Lucario Melmetal. Um, but yeah, too little, too late from our opponent. We're going to get a pretty uh, pretty reasonable dub here over, uh, over the combo Zacian. Um, yeah, either they could have been more aggressive and they just chose not to, or they just didn't really have the draws to be more aggressive, which is definitely fair as well. Um, yeah, they definitely didn't look like they were drawing that ridiculously well, but gonna work out here for us. Skateboard, treat, and just go ahead and knock out their actor for these last two prize cards, and so we'll get this dub over this conversation. All right, we're going first again, um, and we will choose to go first here. Jirachi start. No Zacian yet, but could get a quick ball, which uh, would get us a Zacian, which is what we're looking for here. Be able to be aggressive. Uh-oh. That's a Psyduck. I don't like that. I'm going to get a power plant. 
I do not like Psyduck. Um, and this is not a good attacker for this matchup. Probably the unknown hand attack. I'm gonna get this power plant down before they possibly, um... Oh, what are they gonna do to us? Before they possibly get heads on headache and make it so we can't play trainer cards. Yeah, this is, uh... It's not a terrible matchup. Definitely winnable. It's pretty tough, though. Um, playing up against unknown hand. Point of this deck is to get 35 cards in their hand. And then, um... That's it. That's the whole deck. And then they win the game with unknown hand. They go, they got what? Uh, duck. To land it, uh, to land it. Do they have an energy to possibly headache here? Nope. All right. We get to attack for sure. That's good. We even take out this ditto, um, which I think is what I do want to do. We actually want to attack with the Lucario Melmetal. Um, and we could seal fist. All right. So we're going to go like this. We're going to go. Stellowish. We don't want to have to keep setting, reset, resetting Brave Blade if we don't have to. So we're going to go like this. We're going to go switch. Then we're going to retreat. This ended up being like a pretty good hand. The saucer is exactly what we wanted. Saucer. Saucer, saucer, attach, switch. And then we'll boss his orders up the ditto. Yeah, this is a pretty sick turn, actually. Um. And then go ahead and steal fist. We get the knockout, which is what we want to turn. And then we'll be able to use heavy impact next turn. If we had attacked with Brave Blade, um, and they get a heads on that headache, or if they go will headache heads, for guaranteed heads, we wouldn't be able to switch in the Brave Blade again. So we want to be attacking with that heavy impact. Um, we do want to set up Azation if we do get a possible opportunity to knock out the Oracorio GX that they play, because uh, heavy impact won't cut it. So we do want the Brave Blade for that, but. Uh, getting that prize, prize card, being aggressive, putting the pressure on our opponent is definitely more important. And making sure we're going to attack as often as possible, turn after turn after turn, is most important. And that's what this, uh, doing it like this does. Hopefully we can have a station set up by the time Oral Corio comes around. But we're going to have to, uh, going to have to see. There's the Oral Corio. We do have this power plant in play. They do play a stadium in the form of Heat Factory. Um, but they only play one. So, it could be a little bit for them to find it. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to uh, take advantage of that. No headache. I'm gonna switch back into the draw chain, then play research. Once again, want to set this guy up so we can take out that guy. Got some energy to work with. Gonna grab the Marnie. Let's card the energy. Attach saucer before we can't. Uh, we got two Marnies in hand. We're gonna be looking to use those as soon as we possibly can. Gonna grab another switch to possibly use. Yeah, gonna be if we can play a Marnie next turn. We're gonna play a Marnie next turn. All depends on the headaches. And here we go. Heavy Metal Impact. Once again, that's it. We're just going to impact every turn. If we can get out the Brave Blade to get an extra prize card on that Oracorio on the turn, going to go for that. Going to be a little bit difficult to pull off, though. I think I guess I could have attached these frying pans. We'll do that before we Marnie, I guess. Uh, and yeah, it's all trainer, not just items. Headache shuts down all trainer cards. It is on a coin flip, but they do play Will. And Will guarantees that they get to hit heads or tails. They actually could hit tails if they wanted to off of Will. Um, you get to pick the result of the coin flip. Um... In this situation, they will be picking heads. Um, Fire Crystal was minus one card. That it could have been. They only got two back there with the Fire Crystal, so that's good to see. Um, there's the Heat Factory. A little bit earlier than I wanted to have them see it. Um, can't have it all, though. Dance Tribute. Will they get the Will combo? I'm sure they're going to opt to try and Headache. The question is just, they do have the Will. All right. No Marty next turn. Just going to be, once again, heavy impacting um, and going from there. Have the Zation set up on the next turn, though, so just in case we ever get a chance to boss's orders or a choreo, um, we, all that, we will have that as an opportunity. There we go. Roche Reveal. Um, yeah, definitely a unfavorable matchup uh, if they set up. And that's kind of one of the struggles with the Unknown Hand deck. Super cool deck. Um, tad bit on the inconsistent side overall. Here comes the Headache. Like I said, they played the Will. Guaranteed Head's coming up. I guess I could pick tails. You get to pick the outcome of the coin flip, actually, with Will. It doesn't have to be heads. Attach here. And, yeah, heavy impact. That's why we didn't want to be attacking with Zation with Brave Blade. Because um, we're using Brave Blade every turn, and they're headache in us. We can't play Switch. So we can't play Brave Blade again on the next turn. Uh, it can get a little bit awkward. Um, so, yeah, we just keep to go heavy impact. Here comes the Dance. Then comes the Roche Reveal. Roche Reveal, Roche Reveal, Giant Hearth, or Heat Factory, my bad. Draw up to 12 cards, 15 cards this turn if they want to. Uh, nothing we can do about it. They just get to draw 15 cards. Um, ordinary Rod recovering cards. 
more roast reveals going down the thing is just get, gonna be can they get to 35 cards uh they got quite a few cards out there and not really that many yeah i'm i'm feeling it for them to be honest um they should easily have a will co I, I kind of like feel like they definitely have a will combo here because they chose to um what's it called and they got the recycle energy uh oh i think we're about to get handed the hands here go draw heavy impact down to two prize cards but um even though there's only two prize cards left it's still a ways we got the boss in the hand all right if they uh fail a headache i mean a marnie would probably be just as uh fitting in the situation to shut them out of the game as a boss's orders but boss orders would just win us the game next turn if we were able to do it i don't think we're going to be able to i think our opponent will have uh enough cards to get to 35 cards no problem here so again we'll see but i think uh it should be no problem here for our opponent they're setting up for the headache again it looks like um so they might need to go another turn that's i mean maybe we're starting to get close we'll see they're not really down anything they've they've really been it's been super efficient just a bunch of ducks they just lined up all the ducks and then from there i've just been knocking out ducks um but it's possible they don't get there um, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and let my opponent play through it. Maybe they prized a lot of crystals or scoop up nets um, And just can't quite get to that 35 sometimes it comes really close and you only end up at like 34 or something like that um, It's possible. So we're gonna stick it out. See what ends up happening um, We'll see Still got plenty of like yeah, crystals. They still have that fisherman left unless it's prized um Maybe one more ordinary rod left. Once again, prize. Prizes can be a big deal with this deck. Um, all right, they had the will headache one more time. All right, they have to have it next turn, though. We have one prize card left. So if they don't win next turn, we will win the turn after. So this is it. Heavy impact. One last time on the duck. Does our opponent get to 35 is the question. I've been saying it. I think they can do it. Um... Kind of a rough matchup for us. Not a what? Not not many ways to be more aggressive than drawing strong one prize card a turn. They're aggressively throwing down the hand. Um, I think they got it. Let's see. Dance of tribute gets that last card out of deck. Maybe they have no other ways to recover any more cards. So they could have recovered some. Here come the scoop up nets. Pick up salazzle. Pick up salazzle. Pick up salazzle. Uh, as long as they have two more nets, um, they do play four, and then uh, recover the energies with uh, fire crystals and fisherman. And let's see if they get to 35. There we go. Coop up net. 21 cards in the discard pile is quite a bit. But I don't think it's enough. I think they'll, they'll have enough. There's the Fisherman. Four for one. 17, 18. Uh, they need to do one crystal. I think they have it with just one crystal. I think this is 35 right here. No, not quite, right? 24. No, they should have it. That should be it. Another crystal. Style points. And the hand. All right. <laughs> Take an L here in the second one. I gave it my all. Got that early heavy impact going. The steel fist on the ditto was super cool too, but not quite enough. We're taking an L here in the second game. Hope you guys enjoyed the games. If you did, give the video a like and join the content. Be sure to subscribe. Have a good day. Thanks for watching and peace.